Hello, my name is Mike Fisher. I am the creative director and founder of Studio Indigo. We're a large firm of architects and interior designers based in Chelsea in London. Uh, we're a pretty big practice. We have work in London and all over the world. We work on a variety of projects from houses, apartment buildings, boats, planes, you name it, as long as it's high end. I've always been interested in designers for as long as I remember. Uh, as a child, I always used to play with Meccano and Lego, and I, I would be building things out of balsa and, uh, and generally just making things. Uh, and, and I've always been creative, I think. Uh, and one of the big memories I have as a child is moving into a new house with my parents and wandering around and just smelling the building site, the smell of plaster and brick and concrete. And that's a smell that has stuck with me ever since. And even today, I kind of wander around a building site and I get that wonderful smell in my nostrils and, and it reminds me of my childhood. But somehow it just triggers something in me that, uh, that makes me happy. When I meet a client, I listen, of course, intently to what they want to achieve with uh, their project. Um, and then I set about trying to meet those requirements uh, in the best way that I can, using all my sort of inventiveness and my design skills to do so. And then I put that aside and then I ignore everything that they have just said. And I think to myself, what would I do? What should we do? What does the building tell us? What does the site tell us? What does the client's requirements really tell me? And I try and look at it from that perspective. And sometimes what I come up with matches what the client has asked me to do, and sometimes it doesn't. But the interesting thing about that is that it then becomes a dialogue. It uh, allows us to have a discussion. Um, and I can then challenge the client, perhaps, on you know showing them that there's more than one way to, uh, to achieve something, perhaps a better way. Um, but it creates a dialogue, so that's really the starting point. Studio Indigo, we don't have a signature style as such. Uh, I think if we did, that would be rather boring for me. Um, we're much more interested in, in the client, uh, in the opportunity, in the challenge and the design that's presented to us. And that can sometimes take us in very, very different directions. Um, and it keeps us interested uh, and excited and, and creative. I think we're looking for different ways of solving various problems and it's not always with one look or one answer. So we don't have a signature style. We like to listen to what the client tells us. When we start a project, we want to exploit the natural light. That's what everyone wants, the view, the light, uh, and then with artificial lighting, we can augment that. Um, and we can also have the advantage of changing the atmosphere of a space quite dramatically at the flick of a switch. Um, so the lighting, both natural and artificial, pretty crucial from the start of a project. Lighting reinforces what you've designed. It uh, adds drama and interest, and it adds flexibility it can allow you to change the, the atmosphere of the space quite dramatically um, through dimming, through using different coloured lights. There's lots of op opportunities, I think, there with, uh, with artificial lighting. I've always admired strong women in history, uh, and one of my heroes is Catherine the Great of Russia. She was born a lowly German princess, went to Russia, married the heir, killed him, had him murdered, and became the Empress of Russia. She had great taste and she had very deep pockets and one of her pet architects was uh, a Scotsman called Charles Cameron who, who designed in the, I suppose, the Adam style. But he was a little bit more daring than Robert Adam and he had much better uh, uh, resources in, in Catherine the, the Great, um, who at the time was sort of opening up the Urals. So he had amazing materials that he could work with. Uh, so I've always admired her and I've always envied Charles Cameron as her architect. So 
I would love to have designed for her. And then in terms of a, a living person, uh, dare I say, I'd love to design for the Queen, only because I think Buckingham Palace is the most dreary of all royal palaces in the world, I think. Um, I hate that endless white and gold and red uh, that you see in Buckingham Palace. So I think uh, adding a little bit more color, uh, getting a lighting designer involved perhaps, uh, to give it a revamp uh, and, and really use it as a showcase to show the world what British design can achieve. I definitely don't follow trends. Uh, I think trends are too fashionable and too changeable. Uh, what is fashionable today is unfashionable tomorrow. So I don't really follow trends at all. But I like certain things. I, I like history. I like antiques. Um, I like to take something from the past and reinvent it or put it in a different context so that it becomes more contemporary, more relevant to today. So my, my own trend, I suppose, is the hope that people will appreciate uh, old furniture a little bit more than they do. Uh, and I can show them that you can take it and you can make it relevant to your lives today. Uh, and mix it in with a bit of new uh, and create a look that's a little bit more interesting, less bland, a look that can tell a story, uh, that has history. I also think that it's a slightly more green look, you know, that's obviously very fashionable as well today. I love colour in my interior design work. Uh, I'm definitely not a white and cream man. Um, if you want that look, you definitely have to go to someone else. Uh, I think in our northern climate, colour is just vitally important. Uh, with our long grey uh, winters and autumns, we need life in our project and I just love colour. Uh, if you want the white look, maybe buy a house in Greece, uh, where white works perfectly well. Ah, that's an unfair question. All of my projects are my favorite projects. Um, but no, seriously, you do a project and you go on a creative journey with a client and you realize that dream, that vision, and that's very exciting. But as soon as you've done it, you know, there is always the next project. So whatever is the next project is always the most exciting, I think, at the end of the day. been married. I've been together with my partner for 28 years and we've had 20 houses in that time. So I have kind of been creative and, you know, achieved uh, the refurbishment of a house and then I get bored and I move on and do it all over again and, and that's fun. Listed buildings, particularly grade one listed buildings, are, are a challenge. Um, in terms of lighting because you're, you don't have that freedom to, to do what you want. You know, you are conditioned by the existing building fabric and by the listing uh, of, the, uh, of the house or the building, whichever. So that's probably the most challenging type of project that, that we do. How do you overcome those challenges? By being inventive and clever um, and using your design skills. Um, but you also have to accept that, you know, uh, a historic building isn't a contemporary building. So you wouldn't expect it necessarily to have very fancy lighting and lighting control systems. Um, but nevertheless, you can be pretty clever in how you light schemes. Or at least if you employ Sally Story, you can be very clever in how you light a scheme. What do I like about being a designer? Well, I like being creative. I like building things, I think, from my, your first question to me. You know, I like building things. I like being creative. Um, dreaming of the possibilities and then seeing them realized. And it always surprises me that the vision that you had the sketch that you produce, the CGI that was created, ends up looking like what it's supposed to look like. So that always gives me a, a great thrill um, every time I do it. And where does my inspiration come from? My surroundings, the past, I think uh, I, I've always looked and studied architecture and interiors from, from being very, very young. 
uh, and the inspiration comes from around around me really you know I'm always looking I'm always sketching I'm always taking photographs of the interesting things that I see uh, both in England but as I travel around the world as well to use an interior designer then you have to be prepared to listen otherwise they're just um, someone who, who services your, your, your requirements. Um, I think it's a waste of money. Um, you don't always have to take an interior designer's advice, but you should, should listen. I think the most challenging room to incorporate, well, to design full stop uh, and get it right, and to incorporate, incorporate lighting into his bathrooms and kitchens. Um, my experience is that other people under light both rooms um, and they're more interested in creating a mood and an atmosphere. Uh, I think that's true of most of the lighting designers that I would have worked with. Um, so I really have to be on their case and say, okay, you can do your mood and your atmosphere, but I want light. And certainly speaking for myself, as I get older, I need light, you know. Uh, I want it bright. I have to see what I'm eating and I have to see what I'm cooking. And certainly in the morning, I certainly need to have plenty of light to shave. So yes, those two rooms are the most challenging because I think they're the two rooms that probably fail most in the projects that I work on. Uh, clients complain that there's not enough light in those rooms. During the week, I work so hard. Uh, I always look forward to my weekends when I can, I can go to my house in the country, uh, in Somerset, uh, and I can get away from London. And it's such a wonderful environment. It's a wonderful listed uh, house, Queen Anne. It's got beautiful gardens. And just being in that environment makes me relax. Uh, surrounded by all my favorite things. Uh, I have my dogs. Um, and my family, and that's the perfect way to spend a weekend.